series and is entitled Invention. We will have uh, three main talks today. The first one entitled Bots and Why Wiki Bot will be presented by Martin Demers from Wikimedia Netherlands. The second one <coughs> entitled Engineering Volunteering, What's This Volunteer Support All About Anyway? will be presented by Dirk Franke from uh, Wikimedia Germany. And the third one, entitled The Wikimedia Open Source Project and You, will be presented by Kim Chiu from Wikimedia Spain. We want to encourage free flow during the sessions, so feel free to leave the room at any point. In the spirit of uh, sharing knowledge and encouraging dialogue with people at Wikimania <coughs> and beyond, please tweet using the hashtag Wikimania2014 to keep track of any sessions or for easy access around the Barbican, please download, download the Eventbrite app. Now um, let's welcome Martin Davos and his presentation, Bots and Pilot Bots. This track is called a technology track, but these three sessions aren't very technology focused, or at least they don't go in <coughs> really good. Uh, really Can you speak up a little bit? Can you hear? Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. the mic is a bit too slow. Uh, so this is an introduction to the, the concept of boss and robots on, uh, on uh, Wikipedia and other sites. Um, Amir, to the right, was supposed to give this talk, but his visa was denied. Uh, so I'm filling in for him. It's, uh, uh, he's from Iran, so getting a visa to Europe is always problematic. Uh, it's a shame. This was uh, at uh, the hackathon we had in uh, Zurich, uh, in Switzerland, and there he did get a visa. So it's it's like roulette. You never know if you win or lose. Uh, of course, there are, uh, there are more uh, developers working on my uh, uh, bots. For example, uh, Merlin is sitting up there. Wait, Merlin. I'm not sure if uh, I see others. I only worked on it in the online uh, I have worked on it. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, to get an idea of what, what you guys know already, uh, I would like a show of hands. So who of you know what a bot is? Uh, let's turn it around. Who doesn't know what a bot is? Oh, <laughs> I still have someone. And how many of you actually use the bot in, in, in form or whatever? That's uh, quite a lot. And a uh, coded one? Like, could you... No? So, no. <laughs> so, you know, if most of the people know what a bot is, uh, uh, I'm still repeating it because this is the definition from uh, English Wikipedia. A bot, uh, it's derived from the word robot, it's an automated, a semi-automated tool that carries out the, the repetitive and mundane tasks, the boring, repetitive stuff. Bots are really good at that. Not at complicated stuff, just doing the same things lots of new times. A uh, bot is a bit like uh, a chainsaw. It's, uh, it's, yeah, chainsaws like this. They're, uh, they can be really useful and really quick, but they can be really scary to use, especially if so, uh, someone doesn't really know what he's doing. Uh, well, basically, uh, uh, add functionality to MediaWiki, which doesn't exist yet. Take, for example, categories in MediaWiki, you can't rename categories with its contents, so you have bots to do that for you. Or you have uh, a bot that archives your pages because we don't have something like Flow or another uh, top based system yet. So, easier to implement it as a bot because you're, you're running it in, uh, in your own instead of implementing it as an extension and, and making it really complicated. And most wikis have uh, rules about bots uh, because it's like a chainsaw, it can be dangerous so you have to go through some sort of approval process and you can't go too fast. And that depends a little bit uh, on, on what wiki you're using it on. There. A lot of edits on our projects are done by bots. It's, uh, we still, of course, have lots of editors who <coughs> edit by, uh, by hand, like, like me. But uh, we uh, have separate accounts to run the bots on to make a distinction between the humans and the bots. And about 25% uh, of all edits being done to Wikipedia are bots. And uh, that really differs a lot. The English Wikipedia 
Wikipedia is about 10% of all edits, but there are some really small, strange languages. Who ever heard of Cebuano? Are you saying? Cebuano, the past. <laughs> Apparently, 98% uh, of all edits of that wiki is done by bots. <laughs> 98. Yeah, 98%. And there were some other, like, uh, bar was the language code that had 94% of all edits. And uh, that's because I think there's one user who knows how to operate bots and it's importing lots of articles there. And uh, so that happens too, you can use it for that. Uh, comments is also 25%. Uh, uh, um, uh, comments has uh, a lot of tools to move around files, review other stuff, and that's all uh, done with bots. Uh, Wikidata is uh, the bots are much more important. 85% uh, of all the edits on Wikidata uh, at the moment, uh, since we started, it's done by bots. So, Wikidata is basically ruled by the bots at the moment. Yes. And it might be even a bit higher, because we have tools on Wikidata like the VR, which act a bit like a bot, but use your own accounts. So I can't see them in these statistics. Uh, it's, uh, so they're, they're quite really important to have uh, <coughs> done here on, on our Wikipedia. And uh, this is uh, Merlin uh, writing a someone writing Merlin's book, so that's for my fellow developer. We, uh, on Wikipedia and other projects, we have bots in every language. But every developer wants to make a bot in their language. So we have in PHP, in Perl, in Java, uh, in C++, C++ and C squared, uh, and of course Python. And uh, to be honest, I don't know a lot about other frameworks because I use Python. But uh, they might be really good, and uh, you can't ask me, I'm sorry. Uh, everyone just, uh, it's, it's a fun thing to do, like a, as a programming task, you just write your first block on Media Wiki. Uh, but uh, PyWiki <coughs> has been around for quite some time. It's, uh, it's quite old, it's been around since 2003 already. Um, it uses uh, Python, uh, hence the name PyWiki. We have had different kind of names over the years. It started as a Python Wikipedia bot framework, then it became PyWikiBot, and now it's just a uh, PyWikipedia bot, and now it's PyWikiBot. So we keep shorten it, so maybe in a couple of years it's just PyBot or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, it has, uh, it's a framework and it's a scripts. So uh, the, the scripts are programs you can actually use on the command line to get stuff done. Framework is a library you can build your own software on top of it. Uh, so uh, if you want to just run the scripts, you don't need any Python knowledge. It just happens to be Python. But you have to know how to use com command line. Our all our documentation is on uh, MediaWiki.org. So if you t uh, type uh, MW by Wikipot on your favorite wiki, uh, media project, you'll end up at our documentation. <laughs> um, it works on any MediaWiki install. So I, I used on my company Wiki2 to produce some statistics and other stuff. Uh, that's no problem at all. As long as it's a uh, fairly easy media to install, it will work uh, just fine. We have many contributors to, uh, to the project. Uh, there, um, I think uh, we have at least uh, 10 to 20 quite active contributors right now. It depends a bit on, uh, on how you measure it. Um, Installing uh, by Wikibots isn't that easy, but it works on any uh, operating system I know. It works under Linux, Windows, Mac. I'm running it on NetBSD myself, and probably the only one doing that. It works just fine. Uh, Python has uh, uh, two versions, Python 2 and Python 3, and they're not completely compatible. So you have to be careful. Usually, you know, when you want to download some software, you just take the software with the highest number that's marked stable. Python, you have to take the two version. On Linux, uh, that's already installed, but on Windows or something else, you might be confused. So. There are two branches. Uh, so uh, there's the historic one, uh, that is uh, called Rewrite or Compat. Uh, sorry, I have to come out of the trunk. That's the one we started back in 2003. There's also a, a newer one, uh, uh, we call it Core. That's a complete rewrite we started a couple of years ago. We had a lot of technical depth, uh, a lot of messy code. Uh, when PyWikiBot started, MediaWiki didn't have any form of API, so PyWikiBot did everything by screen scraping. 
<coughs> every time the, uh, the layout was updated, the bots broke. So we wrote, rewrote it completely, and it's all using the API or one minor thing, I, I think. Um, you can download a, a nightly, that's like a zip file which contains all the, uh, all the software in it. You can also use Git or SVN, but that's more complicated. Uh, scripts. Uh, scripts are basically uh, pre-packaged tasks you can run uh, from, uh, from the command line. So if you want to uh, uh, just get stuff done, the scripts are the things you want to use. There are many, many of them. I will highlight some of them that are used a lot. I, we don't really have statistics on the amount of usage of PyWiki uh, and that's still a question I have with analytics. Maybe we think that a script is really aw uh, awesome and everyone is using it, but turns out it would be just the two of us using it. Or something else that we consider as a minor one might be used a lot. Without analytics, we don't know it. You don't need any knowledge of Python to run the scripts. You just need to be able to, uh, to type things in the command line. Um, first time you run a script, you get a, a, this uh, menu asking you some questions to set up your configuration make it easier to uh, just, uh, just start. And the logic of all uh, the bots, by the bots, uh, is, is the same. Uh, you start with uh, uh, a generator. Uh, a generator is a Python concept that just keeps feeding you things. In our case, it's pages. So we have, for example, generator, give me all the pages in the category. Or give me uh, all the pages that use the templates. It can make it quite complicated, like all the pages with the templates only in namespace zero, so article namespace. And uh, that just keeps giving you pages. And then uh, for each page, you do something. Uh, it can be whatever you, your bot is designed to do. Uh, you make some changes in the, uh, the text or other things, and you update the page in the wiki. Uh, that's the general loop all the bots go through. Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, replace.py. It's uh, it's bot designed to replace text. For example, uh, I don't know, you have a template and you want to replace it with another template, and you can just run the bot to it on all pages. Uh, it understands uh, regular expressions, but that's of course bit, uh, that's more difficult than normal replacements. Like normal replacements is one word with another, and regular expressions you have this whole syntax. To, uh, to make more complicated replacements. Uh, both work. There are exceptions possible, so you can say, I want to add all the pages except the ones with title, I don't know, list of, or uh, whatever you make. It's, you can go as extensive and complicated as you want, and it's just from the command line. So for, for people who are used to losing, uh, using Linux, or those kind of tools, this is, uh, <coughs> this is quite easy. Uh, another one is, uh, Category.py. Um, well, as mentioned before, the, uh, on MediaWiki moving categories, uh, it's now recently it's possible to move the category page, but that doesn't move every, all the items that are actually in the category. So you have to use bots to do that or do it manually. But if you have a category with a thousand images in it on comments, you might want to use a bot because otherwise it just takes ages. Uh, so that's the move action. You can also remove a category when it's nominated for deletion or add it somewhere if for some reason you want to duplicate a category. Or even uh, have some tools to split out a category tree. Like if you make subcategories and you want to push things down, you can uh, tidy it. So it will just prompt for each file in the category. Do you want, where do you want to move it? So uh, that's, uh, that's quite useful. And uh, since recently, uh, a lot of uh, Wikidata support. Wikidata is one of the newer projects of the Wikimedia Foundation. We didn't hear of Wikidata already, because it's been mentioned a lot in this uh, conference. So one of the things is Wikidata, as you can see, relies on bots. Uh, bots. But most of these bots were custom-made scripts by people sitting on their laptop or sitting on their account, not accessible for other people. So uh, I wrote a couple of uh, uh, scripts to do uh, simple tasks that people would want to do on Wikidata. So the, the first one, claim it, you can use, uh, uh, add claims to a lot of items. So for example, you take category living people uh, on, on English Wikipedia and you say, okay, all these people are instances of human. Uh, that's a, a statement or a, or a claim on 
een goed idee daar. En dan is het loop over alle pages, check voor de not making duplicates. Harvest template is a bit more complicated. Is, um, you know the infobox templates on all the wikis we have. With harvest templates, you can grab fields from those info boxes and use them to create claims on wiki data. Because you still have to migrate lots and lots of data from different Wikipedias. Um, also, uh, coordinate import and illustrate wiki data. The first one is to import coordinates from the from whatever <coughs> Wikipedia, and the second one is add images. Uh, always useful. And uh, the last one, new item. Uh, you can use that to um, create new items from Wikidata, but it will back off, so it won't create duplicates. So uh, it waits for, I think, seven days after it was created uh, uh, before it actually creates a new item. So if you create an article today, a new item comes along, it will say, oh no, it's too recent, I just wait. And in a couple of weeks, it's, uh, oh, it's been long enough and nobody added it for seven days, I create a new item. I'm very confident that nobody is going to create it anyway. So, helps keep the wiki data going. There are all sorts of random scripts. I picked one I know people use quite uh, a lot. You know, this uh, ambiguation pages, uh, pages on Wikipedia which have multiple meanings. Uh, if you're uh, on Wikipedia on an article and you click a, a link and you end up at this ambiguation page, that's a bit annoying. You just want to go to the subject. So, you can use this bot to automatically uh, solve that. So we'll just for every page say, oh, you want me to link to this, this, or this page. Archive bots, we have lots of talk pages, we love talking. And uh, at some point, the talk pages get too, uh, too large, so we need to archive them. There's a built-in bot with some template syntax. Uh, there are many, many upload bots for comments. Get things from Flickr, from Picasa, for Panoramico, other Wikipedias. Uh, it's all there, and a lot, a lot more. Um, the bot is also a framework, so if you have a new task in mind, of course you can start from scratch, figure out how the media wiki API works, spend a lot of time with that, or you can just take the framework and use that. Uh, you don't have to worry about all the low level stuff, so if your connection, you know, your wireless fails, the bot will just, oh, the connection is gone and waits. Or uh, if you uh, hibernate your laptop, you just continue afterwards. And it has a uh, log here in. It just takes care of things so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and uh, it makes it easy to just build things and afterwards share it. If you want to contribute to uh, PyWiki bots, uh, you can do that on different levels. First one is filing bugs. If you are trying it and uh, using it and you run into a problem, if you file a bug, we know about it. Otherwise, we don't know what to fix. Uh, Marlene and I did a workshop earlier um, this week uh, on, the, on the hackathon and we ran into some problems and we found bugs so we can keep track of them uh, and so uh, people can use it without running into all sorts of things. You can also uh, contribute uh, uh, patches. Uh, we used the, the <coughs> Garrett system like most of the uh, uh, media and developer community. Uh, that learning curve was pretty steep. It's, uh, we switched about I think a year ago, and we saw some de developers dropping out, and now it's it's picking up again. Uh, but no, that's general with the way how we can be a developer community works at the moment. And uh, of course, if someone submits a patch, you can review it, you can provide input, uh, insight, and help people out. So. Uh, any questions? You can ask me questions now, or we also have a, a mailing list where you can ask questions and a very active uh, channel on, uh, on RC, on, uh, on Freenode. Um. Uh, yeah. Is it supported on the tool lab? So which version is supported? Yeah, there's, uh, we have a uh, 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 copy there on tool labs that gets updated automatically. So you don't have to install it yourself on tool labs, but you can just uh, reuse that one. It's, you only have to put in your configuration in your, uh, in your tool and it just uh, and you update your path. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think you have it in the documentation for tool labs uh, how to use that. Thank you. Uh, Merlin and, uh, mostly Merlin and I have to maintain that. Um, each one has a, a, a five file that's, uh, that's supposed to add a new item for the end of the set of things up. Yes. Could you receive the question? Yes. Yeah, I'll finish. <coughs> yes. Uh, um, what was that? Uh, yeah. Right, you said it adds a seven days after you, yeah. you've actually executed it. So, does 
that have to continue executing for seven days? Wait or how does it work? Uh, so the question is if a new item, uh, the program I described, uh, will uh, cancel a page or create item after seven days. No, it's the other way around. So you, uh, you run it and it just goes over lots of pages. For example, you give it a new page generator. You know, the new article on Wikipedia, the link on the left, you can just have a loop over it. And uh, it will just, for every uh, article, look at the criteria. And if it matches, it will create it. If it doesn't, it just skips it. So if you set it up to run, I don't know, once a week or something, you'll catch up at some point. Most, most wikis have a requirement of certain permissions before running a report. How would you recommend for somebody who wants to get started with using this and maybe programming it? Or for initial testing purposes when you're going to be doing things that are, are, are stupid? So the question where, is... Where would you do your initial playing around and testing? Where would you do the initial playing around and testing or the development or other things? Uh, there's test at wikipedia.org basically everything there. Uh, it's one of the many wikis that we have and uh, it's built for testing. Uh, also on production wikis, of course you can test, but do it slowly, keep an eye on it, uh, uh, communicate of what you're doing, what you're trying, so that people can, if you put the bottom really slow, like one edit every 30 seconds, you can manually review each one of them. And when, once you're confident that it works, you can speed it up. Uh, you can also use a similar parameter in that, so it yeah. will go and will show you in the command line everything that will be changed. So, but it still, in fact, will not change, so we still have to see, to see how it So, we have a similar uh, parameter, but it doesn't work on uh, every program. Yeah, yes. <laughs> most of them. I have a question in the back there. Yeah, if you use a bot and you do something you shouldn't have done, is there a way to roll back the transaction that you've done entirely? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just uh, roll back, arrive in media wiki and just click, 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 click. Now there's also, I think there's a rollback box, but I haven't actually used it. It, it, really, it really depends how fast you <coughs> discover that, because if you're fast enough, sometimes you can use the rollback or you can just simply click that. If you find it after a few days and sometimes it happens, uh, probably you will have another edits on the same article. And that it's painful manual work to do to, to, to get it back unfortunately. Yeah. Then you probably have to write a bot to refer to your bot edits. If it's <laughs> if it, it depends sometimes it could be faster to write a bot to do that than to do it manually. I have a question over okay. here. Sorry, uh, 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 a social question. <coughs> um, Wikipedia new editor retention is going down and there's been some studies that show that it's because new users often get
Belmont community and the people with permissions. Before you start using a book, is there anywhere on Wikipedia that you can contact Wikipedia or Wikimedia to say you're going to start using it so that they know that you're going to use it? Yeah. So, we, most uh, projects have uh, a system where, uh, sorry, uh, how to uh, announce that you're going to start running a bot. So, you create a separate, a separate account for your, for your bot. Normally, it's your username and bot attached to it or something more creative. And you put a template on it saying, I'm a bot operated by that person. Uh, and that way, if people see that you're editing, they see, oh, that's a bot and you're operating it. And they know how to contact you. But, but on, the, on the most of the Wikipedias, it depends on the community, but on most of the Wikipedias, you, there is a page where you can uh, request having a bot uh, flag for your yeah. bot so everybody knows it's then hidden from the recent changes. So it's a kind of, a pre of approval. It, it differs very much from the <coughs> Wikipedias. Uh, and then in the end, there's something like a global bot flag, which goes for all the Wikis, except for some others. So, so sometimes it's not that easy to find in a particular one where it is. But yes, there is an approval process on, on, on that. Yeah, I think just project boss and you then. Uh, two more questions. Uh, someone over there, someone over there, I think. So, so since Case you up, so, the risk yeah. so since you decided to rewrite the, uh, the library, why did you choose Python 3? Okay. The 2003 uh, Python. Uh, the question is why we don't do Python 3. But uh, rewrite. Uh, it was, uh, I didn't start it at that point, but uh, I'm not sure how mature Python 3 was back then, and we're still working on just making it compatible so it works on 2 and 3, and, but that's easier said than done. It's, uh, because Python 2 is not, it's not a government team, there will be no new versions. Yeah. So for the long run, at some point, it will need to be changed. At some point, it will just be compatible with 2 and 3, it's just my whole plan. And uh, the last question was on the other So you, you mentioned scripts and you mentioned the framework and I'm not quite clear what the framework is used for. Do you use the framework to write the scripts or is that? Yeah, so uh, scripts rely on the framework. So the difference between the script and the framework. Uh, scripts rely on the framework, but you can also use the, uh, the framework to write your own scripts <coughs> to, do, to do the custom things you would like to do. Um, the framework is a kind of library <coughs> used by the scripts. Yes, I would say. I agree. So I'm out of time, so I think you're just going to continue. This is a really interesting project. Unplugged and still sharing. <laughs> okay, good.
this Birgit, who is at this conference, um, who is some kind of community liaison and explaining software communication between the foundation and the community. There's Sebastian, who is at this conference as well. I think he's even the room, he's there. He's the one coordinating the volunteer support part. Um, it's me, where people are still trying to find out what I'm actually doing, and there's um, my wonderful boss, Dennis, who's coordinating all of us. So, what do we do? Um, I don't want to brag because, you know, we are support, we are not volunteers, we are not doing cool stuff. Volunteers are doing cool stuff, and we try to do <coughs> cool stuff, so we can do better cool stuff. Um, I did write down some of the projects we support. You know Wikilas Earth, you know Wikilas Monuments, um, I give some other one. There's Local K, which is a space rented in Cologne, where we have a room, where the volunteers have a room, where they have some edited farms, workshops, just can meet each other at some times, do some outreach. It's pretty cool to have that. It's quite new, it started in the summer. Um, another one is conventions, that's from the admin conventions, where just some administrators of the German Wikipedia met to talk about problems admins have, and this is about why I'm an admin and why I'm not. And it's quite nice that you have, um, can talk to each other and talk about various and what you're doing. And we are just making rooms for that, for example. Um, this is a literature scholarship where authors who need expensive books can get them from us, which is a thing um, compared to money to content, it's very effective. Just, you know, <coughs> you just saw, I need a report source, I need a book, you can get it. Another one is the Wiki Convention, which is kind of the key media for the German community, which is organized by community members, by volunteers, which will happen in Cologne in October. So if you haven't close by, we are really happy to see you. It's a bit like Wikimania with more, um, less chapter and foundation stuff in our community, but it's really, really nice. Come there, that should be about 200 or 300 people, I think. Another one is the salon, where um, volunteers do like the discussions about open show, <coughs> Wikipedia, and problems of Wikipedia, where there's some guests, where there's some outreach discussions, other people come and talk about Wikipedia, that's really nice, which we support. There's, um, that was the copyright workshop, where administrators and other of the German Wikipedia talked, learned a lot about copyright and what it means for Wikipedia and what freedom of Nevada means for Wikipedia. Um, and a lot of things we do are just photo projects where we give, where we rent, give um, cameras to people who want to do some pictures. We have it in um, rather big scale, this is from Wikilas Parliament, with their only submission to have this Wikimania, where about five to 30 people go to Parliament photograph all the people there, all the parliamentarians, talk to them, talk to them about free licenses, talk about copyright, and then we have free pictures of all the people sitting in the parliament there. This is one of them. Um, sometimes people just go on the air and make photos of them, where you of course have to rent a plane. Most of the times, sometimes you're really lucky to find a pilot who does it for free, but that's very lucky and doesn't happen too often. Um, this is from an award ceremony where just two people gave, where we just, where we just, just gave them a camera. We saw some notable German actors who were there. So we have pictures of the three pictures of these as well. And this is from the Festival Summer, which is a sub-project um, organized by community where people go to festivals all summer line, West Press, and do photos of the artists. We have three photos of the artists. That is Gogol Bordello, which is a rather nice gar, pine, grass, whatever event. You should hear them as well. And that's from the Festival of Summer as well. I should in there because I really like the Festival of Summer. I want to do a unicorn in my presentation and it shows also that even if you have a photo project, people, there's always something inside which is interesting as well. So we do, do a lot of these photo projects. But of course, when we're on projects, we have a lot of questions to ask in our everyday lives. And think, I mean, there's a lot of technical stuff like should we buy cameras and give it to them, or should we rent it from time to time? We do a lot of reporting about impact and measurements. We do a lot of thinking about how to measure them, and that's our stuff because we do the unfair stuff. The <coughs> stuff is done by the volunteers. But um, there are also some more philosophical questions, I think. It's like, you know, we want to support people who do folk 
project for the first time, which would be nice and outreach. But of course, you know, someone who does it for the first time, he has to try it out and maybe he will fail. Where other times you have some users who do projects all the time, of course, know how to do it. We know what they're doing, but it's always the same. So should we focus on one or the other ones? We have many small projects, like two people going somewhere. Or should we have a few big ones, like the festival summer, <coughs> or with less parliaments? Should we focus more on that one? It could be more effective, but it's less people involved normally in small money. One thing we want it to be as easy as possible for volunteers to get some support. The other one, do we have to control it somehow? I mean, that's those um, money given to us. So how do you say it? You want it easy for you or you want to write big applications, write big reports, and to plot what we're doing is it's always, you know, kind of figuring it's about we want to be really flexible and when they, when somebody has a crazy idea we want to support it. On the other hand, of course you want to treat everybody the same. You want that people know what to expect. And when you treat everybody the same, you're not really flexible anymore. You have to find a middle way between that. Do you want to support newbies? Of course, we all want to support newbies. On the other hand, we don't know them yet. We don't know what they're doing. We don't really know if we can trust them. <coughs> we don't know if they're the system, or we want to support community members. If it actually is a community member, you have, you have written 10 featured articles, you have uh, five edits. Do you want <coughs> to know each other? We find out the one thing that's um, human touch, you know, we want to support people, and I think the important part of support is just that people feel valued and respected, which is human touch. But on the other hand, for giving human touch, you need time and spare time, which of course costs staff, which costs money, or you want to be efficient and save time to have less stuff, but then be very impersonal and just, you know, here, here's the stuff and please leave me alone because I have something I want to do. And we're still trying to figure out, I think we've gotten better last year, we do now, <coughs> not we are doing, we have full projects. But we're still thinking a lot about what to do and where to do. And I don't know, um, does anybody have any experiences or questions or know if you had some volunteer support somehow? Are you volunteer support? <coughs> no? Oh, oh yes, yeah, so well, the first one, I think. You spoke briefly about. Um Supplying books to editors, people who need them. How do you go about doing that? Do you work with libraries, or uh, sorry, I didn't. Sorry, you were you're talking about supplying books to editors who needed them. How, yeah. how do you go about doing that? Do you work with libraries, or no? Actually, just buy them. It's the easiest and most cost efficient to buy them. Okay. And technically, they are our books, but not the the editors. <laughs> we just buy articles, buy them. Yes. Wikipedia ticks and how it works. 
and some of them are not here just to, it's nice to have some basically same people working with. But it's always, you know, and it's always, you know, what you can do. And if I say, oh, we have this project, no, we have the same project, you're just the chapter giving the money. And it's always a bit, and I mean, we try to do the way that we do the uncool stuff, the one city's cool stuff, but of course, it's always a bit. And always, you know, when something doesn't work out right now, it's part of what just complain. And Something was out, was out, was out. Of course, it's always attention. And in the end, we want to be it as easy as possible, but when we have control of the money. So it's always, you know, in case we are the bad guys because we don't do the right things. And that, I don't think it can really resolve it. So there isn't uh, an easy answer to imagine this. Just no, that's not easy. Mean, uh, it's everyday work, everyday trying to find human. It's really important to listen to what volunteers are saying. And even if you don't always do what they say, it's really important just to listen as you say that you respect them and you listen to it. And if you don't do it, don't do it, you can say, you know, I listen to it, I have some reasons, I hope you can explain it. I hope I can explain it to you. And, but it's everyday work and always there's some underlying tension which won't go away. Yeah? Thank you. Um, if you have a good project and want to contribute to German speaking, we can project. 
be not in a tech track explicitly because actually even if it has a kind of tech title, uh, it's mainly aimed for non-tech people, although it should be also entertaining and even challenging for technically minded persons. I work at the Wikimedia Foundation uh, with the title Engineering Community Manager and I could challenge the three words of this role but uh, I, I will not just do it. Basically, um, my, my work consists in trying to bring new technical volunteers to Wikimedia projects and try to make sure that the, that the community that is already working on that uh, you know, gets to work productively. Um, I have a question. So, who many of you started as editors first? Okay, so how many of you started with some type of technical contribution? Mm -hmm. And how many of you uh, today are in some kind of technical role as if you're helping out or Okay, so we have an interesting, <coughs> we have an interesting mix. So my, uh, my first contribution was in Catalan Wikisource uh, back to 2006, just because uh, one of my preferred poets uh, had died public domain years ago. And I decided to start just uh, putting all that information there. In the meantime, I was uh, already involved in several open source projects. Uh, I'm a journalist. Well, I was a journalist at some point, and actually I never ended up studying computer science, although it was always a topic around, and for some reason I've been always surrounded, or I was always surrounding uh, developers. And I really like to work with, uh, with developers, and I do my thing, but you wouldn't hire me ever for any development task if you really like your money, if you love, uh, you know, your resources uh, you know, cleverly. So, and this is why years later, uh, then I started contributing to MediaWiki.org uh, and Meta because there was some problem where is the documentation going. So, but anyway, basically I started contributing to mobile related documentation and, and well, at some point I applied and I got a job. And when I joined the foundation, I assumed that anybody with an open source background and anybody with a Wikimedia editing background would just get along because it's just the same thing, it's just focusing on different areas. And to my own surprise, still today, uh, that's many times not the case, or not at all, or I don't know. <coughs> so this is why, it, and, and it's, a, it's a deep topic, so it's not simple. Uh, you can simplify it a lot, but it's not. Um, and this is why I decided to find an excuse, like a Wikimedia session, to find some time to think myself why this might be happening, and, and how we get along better, and etc. Uh, partially, this session is, is a very good continuation from the previous session, so I think uh, I'm very happy about, about the connection. I wasn't as happy about uh, the simultaneous uh, booking of the Media Wiki or Consortium session, so I've been jumping here and there, but anyway. Um, so basically, this, this is what I, I want to discuss a bit. Uh, we have many topics at the community, you know, the media weaver thing, and the flow thing, and the visual editor thing, and, you know, and, and these, are, these, are the, these are the big, the big items that many people can recognize, but there we have many more. And that's fine, like in the best open source projects, or in the best academic uh, encyclopedic projects, I guess, there's always discussions, and without this it would be boring, and we would be doing probably something else. So discussion is good, but I mean, there's a certain point where really discussions are like are, are more counterproductive than productive, and and this is uh, 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 this is the the, the aspects that, that they want to discuss. With. So um, <coughs> so I want to make a diff. Uh, I want to make a difference. Uh, and uh, actually, at the end, you know, summarizing a lot, it's as simple as this. You know, uh, I would like to see less confrontation. I would like to see more collaboration. Easy, no? That's what it is, more collaboration. Easy. Everybody gets it. Um, and 
I think that part of the problem is, you know, I would like to see less divisions and more connections. Um, so how, okay, that's, that's nice. Uh, and actually this is what happens, this, this is exactly the country that happens in, in, in software development. So here the diff is a statement and now I have to see how we do this. Well, usually, you know, here, sadly there's no class two and just implement Wikimedia deploy and now everything is happening. So, Let's move forward. So first I think a bit of theory, because I think a bit of theory is needed for this one. <coughs> so we have this tale of the two cultures. And that was my 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 culture clash when I joined with you know with a Wikimedia Foundation capacity in the engineering community. And, and actually it was even before it was in the interview uh, to get that job, which was my first chance to discuss not just with fellow editors and some people at the Wikidotor that, that were like really like swimming in the community. But to get to talk to a lot of people that actually they understand a lot about Wikipedia, a lot about communities. Uh, but but I was surprised to see this, you know, there's the editors and there's the developers and you do things for the editors, you also can do things for the developers, the editors, developers, developers, editors. And I don't buy it. I still don't buy it. I, I will discuss it to death. I don't buy it. Um, and I don't buy it not just because of my open source background, where developers and users, there's also this big discussion in, in software development, you know, all the users, all with the developers. And actually, open source, uh, when well implemented, shows you that there's actually a continuum. And many of your developers started being users, and um, some of your developers eventually use the software they developed, that, that too. Um, so, so I think this is a big problem. And actually, it's a hoax. And I would like to help me and help yourself by declaring this a hoax. It's not true. It's, it's a damaging lie. And uh, I know it's said with the best of intentions, and, uh, but I really think it's not true. And I really think it doesn't, I don't think this helps Wikimedia in any way. So that's the first invitation. You, you're going to get more invitations in the session. Uh, is what we see here is you have open knowledge contributors, and you also see open source contributors. And actually, if you would get, a, get, get down to the definition of knowledge and source, source is just part of knowledge. Especially if you're building an online encyclopedia, you know, that source is kind of important, you know? So, um, so yes. And I think once you step from here to here, all the rest gets a lot easier. Still many complications, don't get me wrong. But still it's, uh, it, it's really a lot easier. So. Don't get stuck here. Follow me. Let's continue to. So okay. So collaboration. Well, what is true is that we are not all same. Uh, you know, uh, it's not even that all the editors. No, no. It's that really individually we are not all same, and um, and this is why if we want to collaborate and we want to connect, uh, we need to sync. Uh, to synchronization <coughs> without the internet. Okay. So this is a fixing thing in pure physics, pre-internet years. Uh, if you think of it, I mean, it's, it's easy to sync when you are playing in the same time, you know, uh, in the same space. And actually, I was finding out having the same gravity helps on many things. I don't know if you realize, but imagine that, hi, I'm still Louis Armstrong. Actually, I never quite came back from the moon, and I want to play soccer, sorry, football. Oh, I can say football, actually. Uh, I can play football with you. It's really difficult. So having a, a common sense of gravity helps on many things. So, and, and it's like, yeah, okay, this is a theory part. Can we please go down? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'm, I'm getting into it. So, okay, let's look at time. And can I just leave this place? Do you think, oh, but maybe, I don't know. Anyway, time. So the truth is that if you look at uh, where most of the software is being defined, how it's going to be, is here. <coughs> mostly here. I mean, if they do this thing right, really soon, really often, it's, a, it's not just straight, they go up and up. But really, what happens here is very important. And now, if you look at where most of the conflict between these guys, apparently, uh, or even this <coughs> here, most of the discussion and, 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 and tears and, and everything happens here, 
well, like here and really like in the last letter mostly, you know, <laughs> not even not even the first, letter, you know. So, um, so what everybody needs to understand uh, is that it's really difficult not to develop software this way. Actually, you don't want a world where software is not developed this way. So you meaning, for instance, now the more editor or less tech people. You really don't want that. So even if you don't feel like participating yourself in roadmaps and plans and prototypes and all that, you really have to understand that all this not just is happening, needs to happen and it's good for you. And you need to be aware of that. Especially if you're going, if you think that you're going to have a strong opinion here, well, guess what? The, the sooner you catch the ball, uh, the more influence you will have, the more effective your voice will be heard, the, and the more, you, the more you will learn yourself about all the other factors involved. Because guess what? I mean, you don't like that cover? Yes, but and, and, and for almost everything in a, in a piece of software, there's many factors in play. So time is important. And when, when uh, the tech and non-tech share a concept of time and release time, everything is a lot easier. So this needs to be understood. And if you don't do understand it, that's fine. But then you will be among those that say, OK, whatever, I guess I'll get used to that, which actually is what happens most of the time. Then let's talk about space. So um, I'm ashamed every time I see this. I think I, I, and I, you know, well, this is a mess, as you can see. If these are the places where we're supposed to be discussing tech, that's just a mess. And actually, I'm, I'm cheating already. So IRC is not here. And what I say, fabricator, you know, because just I'm so much into the future and etc. Actually, I should put four or five labels more there, or four or five different tools with four or five different uh, registration processes, ways of working, etc. And that's a real reality today. Well, uh, guess what? You, you know, when I look at it, what I think, it, it reminds me to to this. Uh, you know, the, something cabalistic, uh, like obscure. It's really difficult to penetrate <coughs> just if you're an outsider. I mean. We, we people, like, populating all these spaces all the time, it's really difficult. So it's like, but we didn't, didn't, we didn't agree this. Oh, yes, we did. Uh, but where? Oh, yeah, you weren't in the hangout about something. Oh, no. But, you know, so. So one recommendation here is from all those things, actually, you have to bear with yourself. Who's familiar with this fabricator name? Who has heard fabricator before? Okay, so don't worry, but basically this is a space that we are working on. Who has heard about Bugzilla? Okay, so basically when it said Bugzilla, it will say fabricator. Now, who has heard about SBN, Git, Gerrit? So, uh, fabricator. Uh, who, who has? Yes? I've heard about fabricator. You have? Yeah, 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 no, no, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm, explain, I'm explaining right now. Uh, so, who has heard about Trello? Okay, uh, fabricator. Uh, mingle. Uh, fabricator. So you get the you get the idea, no? Um, um, well, basically, fabricator is well, will be the place. So all this, all the work that is happening in four or five different spaces should happen there when it comes to uh, a project. So yeah, okay. So we have to do this, and I don't know. They gave us about six months. So how we should go about it? Uh, okay, let's split tasks. Uh, this is a dependency, etc., etc. So all this is happening will happen in Fabricator. But also, well, you know what? When I click here and then I press this key, everything just blows up, and my, my computer is suddenly quite warm. So and that's a bug. So you also would go to this common interface, or I have a patch. Can you review, please? Or you know, etc., etc. Or do I have a, I have a mockup? Can you can you fit, you know can you comment on this mockup? So all those things would happen in a common interface, but it's actually quite friendly. I can tell you, if you have been swimming ever in Bugzilla or Gary, I think you will feel happy. Anyway, so all these words, fabricator, then MediaWiki.org as the place to document anything related with development. Anything. Like, you know, uh, these discussions of, yeah, but I think this is a bit more, I don't know, because this is really like, it is more like Wikimedia, not that much MediaWiki. Or, well, you know, because this is so important in my own project, uh, like some language, some project, or, and, you know, 
it, just everything, make it easy for everybody, you know, it's multilingual, it's a wiki, it has also an edit, edit source button, and actually you get to like your features tested there in advance, so if you're technically minded, it's really fun to be in Media Wiki, because you're among the first ones like playing for real with those things. So, Fabricator, Media Wiki, then Tech News, who is reading Tech News on a weekly basis? Alright, there's something that you could do right now, you go to Meta, Wikimedia.org, you search for tech news, and you just subscribe. And this will, this will give you access to a weekly summary of the highlights happening in the tech, technical area. And not interested, this point to come, it's really short, comes every Sunday morning, uh, Sunday, Monday, and it really helps you understanding what's going on. And finally, users. And when I mean users, I, when I say users, I mean users. So, top pages or all the means to get to users. All of us editors, are, you know, everybody with a username in, in a Wikipedia project. I think our life would be a lot easier. All the rest of spaces would continue to exist, but they wouldn't be critical to know what's going on or to decide or influence or anything. You want to be in that loop, just follow these spaces. And gravity, so remember, we were in the same thing, sinking in terms of time, sinking in terms of space. And now, this concept of gravity that I fight here. So, it is very difficult to discuss any topic when you don't have a common background or you don't have a common set of assumed priorities. In Wikimedia, we have the five pillars. No five pillars? Well, all the discussions we're having, imagine them like, like just you know, potentially exploding. Uh, so, it's just a coincidence that I found like five words here. I tell you, I'm not dealing with the five pillars, but still. So um, we have design and we have software code. Uh, I guess I felt cool when I wrote this, but sorry. Is you know uh, these are quite in between uh, activities, uh, but slightly different, and and both actually uh, have something in common. You can be relatively new, but if you're good on this and you listen and you pay a bit of attention, you can produce actually useful. I mean, it doesn't take you five years of editing to, to contribute that useful patch that fixes a problem, if you are good at looking at code and fixing code. Or it doesn't, you know, you get, you get the point. On the other side, we have platform and mission, which are different type of beasts. Uh, platform is a very important concept that we don't talk about uh, because the, the, the point being that you can develop nice shiny features and you can have bright shiny ideas, but if they don't take into account the, the platform, either they will not fit the first day, or either you're going to regret 100 days later only, leave alone three years later. Um, I will not give examples of projects because uh, many of us would just, uh, you know, like just sing a bit on shame. But having, uh, it, it's important in the discussion. So many times it's, hey, I think that this is a great idea. And someone comes with a boring explanation, but he's right because, you know, you know the problem is that your idea doesn't fit here. Or the problem is that when we do this, we have to get uh, two extra developers only to pay attention to that because it doesn't fit your platform. As opposed to this, when the platform is strong and the features connect very well, it's very easy to uh, add, remove, adapt, put it somewhere else. It's a bit like Lego, literally. Okay, and then the mission, uh, which actually many of the many of the discussions we have, I think they boil down to the mission. It's different understandings of the mission, or even different levels of knowledge of the mission, its importance. Uh, media way where they say, hey, but attribution is something, and it should be like three pixels bigger than one. Well, actually, what they are discussing is how relevant is that is that piece of interface according to the mission. Or anonymous editors that uh, should be able to edit a mobile. That uh, <coughs> goes both down to the mission. So actually, it is very useful. Uh, and of course, in, in each of these axes, you can know more, or you can have no idea. Um, and as a, as, a, as, a, as a community, as teams, in our discussions, in our collaboration, the higher the higher we get in the in, in terms of merit and, and experience, the higher we get in the four axes, the, consider this as a product, for instance, then the, the more focused, the more accurate, the more uh, efficient our products are. With the caveat that 
probably, I, I don't have data, by the way, citation needed. Sorry, I'm not an academic. Go find somewhere else uh, for that. But I do believe, and I'm convinced, that somehow it's true that actually the level that you achieve is based on the lowest level of any of the corners. So if you're really strong on design, code, and even platform, but you're failing on mission, <coughs> this axe is going to be down here. And actually, your line is going to be around here. Okay? And this is very important. If we're not playing with the same axis of gravity, then it's when we discuss a lot more, and, and everybody wastes energy, as you probably would waste a lot of energy trying to play football with gravity, and uh, with moon and earth gravity at the same time. Yeah? Are you... Do you find it interesting so far? Okay, cool. Uh, it's the first time I pitched this to anybody, so uh, I was, and um, yeah, don't worry, action. So there's plenty of things that we can do. So many, overwhelming. Um, and some of them would require me to convince the whole platform team to change the roadmap. Some other, actually, maybe it's just, you know, like, <coughs> like change it just a bit. Uh, many people just changing this little bit, and we could do it tomorrow. Um, but I actually decided to focus on three only just for whatever reason. So, number one, empowering tech ambassadors. Who? Who is a tech ambassador? Who considers him, herself, a tech ambassador? Uh, who knows? That was my second question. Who knows what is a tech ambassador? Okay. Um, I will save you. I will try to explain um, so basically, in Meta, there's not only a tech news page that you should look at, there's also a tech ambassador's page, and basically what you do there is, you, you try to be a connection between your project, like I'm active in Catalan Wikipedia and in the evenings, just because I didn't have enough of Wikimedia development related discussions, I actually try to bring news about things that are not so not obvious to see. Hey, have you heard about Winter? There's a prototype, you can play with it. Or, you know, the, I don't know, like now there's a translator uh, that actually is just with clips you get articles from Spanish to Catalan translators, they're looking for better tests, these kind of things. So how you get to know about those things? Well, because you have subscribed to techniques. And uh, maybe a bit more because you have your own interest in other things. So the problem with tech ambassadors is, well, as we can see, nobody knows about them. That's part of the problem. Uh, but also what happens is that tech ambassadors today is a mailing list that you subscribe to and it's a list of people that subscribe to tech news. And, well, this is better than, I mean, this is, the, this is a great achievement. We didn't have this a year ago, two years ago. It's a great achievement. But still is a bit, it likes a bit of structure. It's, it's okay, so just to continue with the function, it's difficult for a tech ambassador or for someone with, to play with the tech ambassadors to sync on time, space, and gravity because it's really too long. It would be better if we would have, for instance, yes, so I'm very active in the Dutch Wikipedia, and I know who my tech ambassadors are, and they are great, you know, they just come with you, etc. and my English, uh, because I'm so weird that I live, I'm a Dutch and I don't speak good English, uh, <laughs> uh, I cannot communicate with that well, but they do it for me. So, identify, for instance, who are the tech ambassadors in my project? Who are the more tech? In every project, there's one, two, three, hopefully more people that are more tech-minded than that we, you know. And, and, and also, in general, then we, we, we look at the, at the community from the point of view of the developers, for instance. So who are the tech ambassadors that are really strong in multimedia? Because we will listen to everybody, but we definitely want to listen to the tech ambassadors are strong in multimedia before we uh, like bless our roadmap for the next three months. Uh, so we don't have this. And it shouldn't be difficult to have this if we want to have this. So here goes uh, another proposal for action. Um, get to your own communities. Ask those that fix the gadgets when they break, uh, that make the bots do these other things that they were not doing last week. Uh, these are, this, this, is, this is a typical tech ambassador. Uh, your, among your admins, uh, five will run. As soon as you say something like this, three other will be say, Listen, say, okay, maybe, yeah, why not? Um, anyway, this is one part. Another part is uh, bot, gadget, template development in one single place. Media Wiki Tutor, because I want to be consistent with my definition space. Uh, so now it's a mess. I don't know if you try to 
develop or maintain or reuse or customize any of these pieces, you have to start in English Wikipedia probably, then you will realize that no, actually they copied from the Germans, then you go to German Wikipedia and try to skin the company. It's really a mess. It's really a mess. For something that on the other hand is very simple. Bots are simple, gadgets are simple, and templates are simple for the most part. Okay, for the most part. So here's another proposal. I think life would be easier for everybody if these developers that now spread all over, and many of them they don't even think that uh, developer me, I'm just copy pasting, trying to be smart copy pasting things from other Wikipedia. This, this is what I do. Well, sorry, you are a developer, and guess what? There's a lot of copy pasting in, in the top line of development. Um, hopefully not, but I hope it's true. Um, so that, that's another, it, it requires changes as well, but the first step would be willing to do this. Um, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure what that means. Also because uh, these are real tech ambassadors. Uh, when it, I'm not saying that three words were not real, but these are actual, they are already doing this. Uh, when, when someone decides to develop a gadget, it's usually because that person has been listening complaints from users and he has a minimum technical understanding or minimal experience of what's going on in other projects saying, oh, this thing you're complaining about, actually it's not a big deal. Your 72 copy pastes can be easily solved by a bot that will do it when you're sleeping and even before you think about it. So, um, and, and, but, but actually maybe the problem is it, to start with, why does an editor need to do 72 copy pastes? Maybe that's actually a functionality that should exist in Visual Editor, I don't know, you know? So these people is very important to have them together and to have them next to the tech ambassadors, next to the developers, all of us joining a bigger, nicer, uh, funnier party at MediaWiki.org. And number three, use a developer feedback loop. I'm sorry for this stream. I, I wanted to constrain myself to two lines in a big fun. I already cheating because it's a bit smaller than the previous one. Uh, but what I mean is there must be a way for developers in a wide sense, so someone that is working on a software project, someone that, is, that knows what we are working on, that unless someone stops us, is gonna be in all your user pages, all your Wikipedia's in X months. There must be a way for these people to communicate directly to the users that care about something. So I care about how the images look in pages, or I care about, uh, mm, yeah, edit it. I, I'm trying to come up with, with the same example as we, we met before. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to know what's going on with discussions or something like this. So there must be a way for editors to write five lines saying, hey, we just did this prototype in labs. Check it out. Path. And then imagine that there would be like 17,000 people from all the projects that said, I'm interested in that thing. And that goes directly. Community liaisons, community engagement, tech ambassadors, uh, Jimmy Wells, all these people will be still needed. But, but it would need, we needed more for qualitative communication, uh, not to just bring the news for every single thing. There must, I mean, there must be a way, no? is, is it not that weird that people can subscribe to topics and you receive, I, I think this has been invented in the internet before. So we should be able to do this. Um, and I think it would save us a lot of hassle and actually would take a lot of discussions from that last a lot of it. I think when you implement all those things, I oh know that was too late. Here, so all these discussions that are happening here, my three recommendations. Basically, what they are doing is helping a lot to push them sooner and actually to have richer communications. Because a, you are still not upset. I didn't have time to get upset myself because the feature doesn't exist yet. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and B, also be more understanding and uh, be less polarized because it's not about ah, me, the, the foundation, ah, me, ah, the foundation, good. It's more about uh, people that agree with me and surprisingly many people that don't agree with me and at the same time they don't agree with, 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 with themselves either, you know? So, and, and the, this way all of us understand a lot more what's going on. And, <coughs> well, by following these three recommendations, I really think we can get this done and discuss a lot less. And guess what? I really think it's too. So it's not aspirational 2020 anyway. So I, I really think that we can have big improvement just with little steps in the direction of the big goal compared to the situation we have right now. Um, yes? So is there a method for users to volunteer to give feedback? <laughs> Uh, so, no, yes, that's, that's part of the problem that we're going to solve. But, I mean, 
mean, the first thing it, it would be, I think the first thing is you could go to MediaWiki.org. Have you been to MediaWiki.org? Yeah? Okay, so you could go there, find the betas page, and get familiar with that. Well, subscribe to Tech News and get familiar with the beta. But Tech News already will remind you when there's a new beta. Okay, so actually, if you want, you can even jump the, just forget MediaWiki.org. Subscribe to Tech News because when there's a new beta to try something, they will let you know. And then you go through your project, uh, if it's already enabled in your project, otherwise, you know. Anyway, you would find, you would go probably to MediaWiki.org at least, and then you can start using that beta, and then in the top page, uh, you can already start discussing with other people using that beta and start providing feedback that goes directly to the developers, and actually still have a good time to, to fix things. Instead of all or nothing, 
or all better or nothing, uh, you would just uh, send a new, a new feature to 5% of the users, and then you would have, be able to see the level of satisfaction, and then have a red button that just brings you back, and nothing happens, you know, and we can continue discussing that. Uh, yeah, so that's something. Yes? How about the experiments? If we have somebody who maybe actually tried this one, tried this one, this one, and then we have the same, we have to go now there, we see what changes in any time, and that's really Well, so uh, the, uh, at least we tried to do this. So there's AP tests, there's, there's partial deployments, there's, uh, you know, there's different strategies whether we should start going out to the small Wikipedia or should we start, you know, we are, we are, we are trying, um, but there's room for improvement. Um, so. This is happening. Yeah, this, is, this is happening, but, but of course, because it's based on a sample of people, not everybody knows, or not every, you know, but it is happening. And again, I think that if you're interested on this, First step, get to the tech news because at least this is where you get the highlights. And then you step, maybe you missed the, the last uh, A-B test on something, but then at least you know who the team that's working on that. You get join their mailing list because you're interested in that area. And A, uh, you're able to join the next experiment. B, uh, well, now you are a tech ambassador. Well, how did that happen? <coughs> uh, I think we still have room for one question if you have it, otherwise. All right, thank you very much.